Gary then pre Wicker at home. Gary, is this a, a little bit more like once more into the breach with the, the playing squad, you know, the current playing squad that you've got for this game? Um, yeah, I, I don't know what context that sentence in Shakespeare, if that's what it was, what, what the context was when that sentence came out. So um, I'll put it in sort of my words, is that of course the team has got to come from the current squad um, because we can't do anything sign anyone until uh, the 1st of January, ready for the 2nd of January. Um, what I can tell you is at that point we will have, I'm pretty sure, 90% sure, 99% sure, that we'll have three new players for the 2nd of January and I'm hoping that maybe one or two more but that might have to wait a week or two. Um, I can't throw that out there yet because in case Man United come in and decide that they like them as well, um, because nothing's actually signed and can't be signed until the contracts are signed on the 1st of January. So I've got to keep that. So once more into the breach, um, at the end of the day, it gives some of the lads an opportunity um, to gain a few brownie points at this late stage. Um, some I've already made my opinion on and uh, some already know and you haven't seen around for a little while uh, there's a few that I've got to talk to over the next few days um, and there's a few that are, are, are teetering on that on that brink where you know they can still they can still recover if you like and uh, the ones that recover I guarantee will be part of a, a group that will be stronger than we've had in the first half of the season. Is there pressure on you to offload some of the players who are currently in and around the squad or you know, do you keep those and strengthen the squad and make sure that you've got competition for places behind the new faces you're bringing in? Yeah but you can't have too big a squad because you can't keep them all happy so there's there's players that haven't had many games, there's, there's players that I think um, have not quite cracked it. Um, and it's pointless keeping those players around when you'll you have enough numbers anyway. So, you know, you're looking to bring in uh, three or four loans, and I'm looking to bring in one or two proper signings. Um, that's the idea, and then that sort of like helps half your team. Um, and then obviously your subs bench always looks stronger when, when you do that. What's the situation with the three players who you're hoping to sign on the 1st of January? Have they been training with the squad already? How have they looked if they have? Um, well, I'll, you know, that I won't be saying whether they have or they haven't, but um, we know them inside out by now. You know, we've watched all their games, we've spoke to people and we feel they're the right characters to come into us. And uh, as I say, we can only give you all the information on the 1st of January. So. You know, it's, you can all speculate like you've been doing and as I say, sometimes you get it quite close, sometimes you're miles away, um, but it's happening at every club, so that's the nature of uh, the way they've made the transfer windows. And the Cheltenhamification process, which has got to happen. What? Process? The Cheltenhamification process? Oh. The Cheltenhamifying process gotcha. yeah. of getting the new players up to speed with how things are here. I mean, will the style of the club change to accommodate those new players or have they got to sort of fit in with how you want the team yeah. to be? Well, of course, they've got to... F January, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't turn it off. <laughs> I should be taking that, but I'm, I can't because you lot are here. But anyway, that's another thing. Um, I'll, meet, I'll meet you back in a second. All right. Hurry up, because I might have lost somebody that's decent. Um, Chocolate of players. Yeah, um, that won't take me long, uh, because I like to think the players we're bringing in have, uh, have got a football brain, and uh, I've already had my meetings with them. I've already shown them what we do, what I do. Can you see yourself in, in this group, um, playing this way? And they've all joined us, even though on the face of it, we're in a precarious situation. So anyone that comes in, 
and says yes to us is probably going to be the type of character that's happy to battle and fight and uh, you know and show us that they've got the competitive qualities that we need. Wickham obviously on a great run at the moment, sort of game where a lot of people wouldn't give you a chance. Is that sort of a good thing in a way? The underdogs just sort of gives you something to prove. Um. Well, I don't know. I think I don't think Wickham will see us as major underdogs. It's only at the moment because of the league position. Um, I know Gareth Well. He's a he's going to be a top manager. Um, he was probably the hardest working and the hardest tackling right winger I've ever had in my one of my teams. Um, uh, so, and he's got a, a team that that do the same. That work hard. Akin Femmer I know really well, so I know what his strengths are. It's not hard to see what his strengths are, um, but he's he's a fit lad and did great for me at Northampton. Um, so I know him well and uh, and they're up there. So I'm not going in feeling like the underdogs, but I know the league table looks like we're, we're underdogs. I think every game has been close, as we showed against Barney. You know, the lads worked hard, tried hard, but it was just that little bit of quality when it was needed, wasn't there? And how do you stop Adebayo Akinfenwa? Because plenty of people try and yeah. not that many always succeed. You hit him over the head with a shovel in a car park. <laughs> but he's likely to just take it like that and, and hit you over the head. He's, once uh, Bayo's on, on the pitch, he's, he's got this presence. And you've got to compete with that presence. Um, some referees think he's fouling all the time, and some don't. Um, we'll have to wait and see which, which one we, we get, because his game is about body contact. And uh, there's no finer, stronger body than Bayer. And he promotes that every other week when he's on different TV programmes and that. But he's also very good in the air. He's not. He's not tall, very tall, but he's very strong in his arms and doesn't allow anyone to come into that space that he claims is his by having his arms arms out. But uh, look forward to seeing him actually. He, when I last saw him he said, don't be a stranger and I'll always remember that and uh, be good to see him. Injuries, how's your squad? Um, the squad is okay. We've had we had a few sniffles going into the other game, and a couple of lads nearly didn't play, but pushed themselves and, and ended up playing. Um, but they're all. I think they're all over that now. We've got a later start today because um, obviously we've got to wait for the sun to get into our training ground, and obviously fog to clear. So we told them to come in a little bit later. So I won't know for sure till they're all getting. And Holman and. Uh day to no ill effects from their appearances off the bench? No, the well they didn't you know, they didn't have that long really did they to have any ill effects but the good thing was that both of them felt that their you know, their injuries were, were fine so certainly not as far as injuries concerned. Though. Thanks Gary, I'll let no. you take calls.